This video will cover some of the foundations of business analytics, selecting, filtering, and sorting. There are many synonymous terms to describe the aspects of a typical data file, which can be referred to as a table, spreadsheet, dataset, or data source. Along the horizontal axis are the variables, which can also be called fields, attributes, or columns. Along the vertical axis are the observations, also referred to as records, tuples, or rows. Fields that are sparsely populated, meaning that a high percentage of records is missing, should not be selected. Fields with redundant values, meaning that a high percentage of records have the same value, should also not be selected. Techniques to identify these fields vary. For now, a visual inspection of the first few records can be used. From this table, we can remove the state column because all of its values are the same. We can remove the religion column because it is sparsely populated. Our table now depicts only the variables of interest. Once the variables of interest have been selected, they can be renamed if needed and assigned the proper data type. There are two common variable types, numeric and categorical. Numeric variables include discrete variables, which can include whole numbers used for counting and IDs that represent a unique entity, and continuous variables, which are numbers with decimals used for measuring. Categorical variables include text, which is any combination of letters, numbers, and symbols in strings or characters, and Boolean, or binary variables, which contain only one of two possible values. Variables that can be treated as either numeric or categorical include dates, such as date time, date or time, and spatial objects, which show location, such as latitude and longitude. Here are the variable types for our table. Person ID is a discrete numeric variable. Gender and city are string variables. Weight is a fixed decimal variable, date of birth is a date, and student is Boolean. Software packages can automatically assign fields with data types, and sometimes these can be assigned incorrectly. Examination of these data types is necessary to ensure proper utilization further downstream. Sometimes data formats require advanced data transformation and extraction techniques. For example, dates can have varying formats that can be interpreted as strings, and parts of these strings need to be separated before the software can identify as a date field. For now, we'll assume that you can change a field's data type without these advanced techniques. The final aspect of the select step is to assign the proper size for each variable. Many software packages can do this automatically, but it's still a good idea to review the sizes. Because the size of each field has a direct impact on the amount of storage required for a data set, specifying these can save system resources and processing time. A common issue is for one record that contains many more characters than the typical record to cause the size to be much larger than need be. A visual inspection of the table can highlight these instances, but beware that changing a variable's size can truncate or cut off some of the values. While selecting limits a data set's size by omitting certain columns, a filter limits a data set's size by omitting certain rows. A filter is also known as a condition, subset, or in SQL, a WHERE clause, and it's commonly used for investigative purposes. It's important to be aware of the information contained within the row of a data table. Also commonly referred to as a record or observation, a row defines the level of detail that is contained in the data set. For this example, each row represents one person. An ID field, such as person ID, in which no rows contain the same ID, can be used to determine that the table's level of detail is a person. If there are multiple rows for the same ID, we know that the rows reflect data from the same person. In this example, the level of detail is more granular. It shows a record of one person's weight by day. Finding and understanding the level of detail for a table is necessary before analyzing the data. After determining the table's level of detail, you should check for duplicate observations. These are rows of data in which all values are exactly the same as another row. In some cases, duplicate observations may be legitimate, but usually these are erroneous and need to be removed. Here's our table with the erroneous observation removed. This table is filtered to show only records of people who live in Raleigh. Let's try another filter. Here's our original data set again. This table is filtered to show only records of people who weigh more than 180 pounds. Filters of different variables can be applied together. Combining the above examples, we can filter the original table for people who live in Raleigh and weigh more than 180. This results in only one observation. The next step is sorting. When we sort, we rearrange a table by ordering the rows according to the values of one or more fields in either ascending or descending order. Here's our original data set. It's sorted by date of birth in ascending order. Here we've sorted by city in ascending order and then by weight in descending order. This concludes our video on selecting, filtering, and sorting.